This video is on section 2-2 on conditional statements. By the end of this video, you should know what conditional statements are, um, be able to write a conditional statement, um, determine if a conditional statement is true or false, and also give the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement. This video also covers one geometry standard, G.6.1. A conditional statement is an if-then statement. For example, if you can read this, then you are too close, is a conditional statement because it's in an if-then form. Um, conditional statements have two parts. There's an if part and a then part. The if part is called the hypothesis. So the part you can read this is the hypothesis, and it tells when the statement can be applied. Okay. Um, the then part is the conclusion. So the part you are too close is the conclusion, and it tells what happens or what is true when the hypothesis applies. Um, the hypothesis is sometimes abbreviated with a lowercase p, and the conclusion is sometimes abbreviated with a lowercase q. Now using this p and q notation, we can write conditional statements as p arrow q. Okay? And that's read if p then q or p implies q. Now this notation will come back later on in the video when we talk about other kinds of conditional statements. All right, let's practice identifying the hypothesis and the conclusion of these statements. Number one, if an animal is a robin, then the animal is a bird. Well, the if part is the hypothesis. Tells us when the statement can be applied. And the then part is the conclusion. What well, must be true when the hypothesis applies. Number two, the statement, um, the if part is the hypothesis. Um, if the sidewalks are wet, then the conclusion, it has been raining. Okay. Number three is a little bit different. The dog will bark if a stranger walks by the house. Um, now, it's different because the statement does not begin with an if. There is an if, but it's in the middle of the, of the sentence. Uh, but this statement still has a very clear um, hypothesis part, or um, when it applies, and a conclusion part. And this statement applies when a stranger walks by the house. So this must be the hypothesis. And the dog will bark is the conclusion. OK? Let's talk briefly about when a conditional statement is true or false, and then go back to those statements and look at their truth value. Okay? A conditional statement is considered true if it is always true. Okay? Um, a conditional statement is false if it can be false. Okay? If it's ever false, um, or there are cases where it's false, the statement is considered false even though it, it could be true in so, at some times. Okay, so number one, if a woman is Hungarian, then she is European. Um, this is the hypothesis, and this is the conclusion. So, um, if a woman is Hungarian, meaning she's from Hungary, then she is European, meaning she's from Europe. Since Hungary is in Europe, this statement will always be true. Okay, because every woman from Hungary is from Europe. Number two, if a number is divisible by three, um, meaning it divides evenly into three, like three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, are all numbers that are divisible by three, when that applies, um, then it is odd. Well, um, some of those numbers are odd, three, nine, fifteen are odd numbers, but it isn't always true. And since it can be false, um, it's considered false. And the counterexample of this statement would be the number 6 would be a counterexample 
or the number 12 would be a counter example. Okay? Let's go back and look at these. If an animal is a robin, then the animal is a bird. Well, as far as I know, the only animals that are robins are birds. So I, I would consider this a true statement. Number two, if the sidewalks are wet, then it has been raining. Well, um, is it ever true that the sidewalks are wet, but it hasn't been raining? And I think about, well, what if um, the sprinklers were on, or if someone was washing their car, um, and it hasn't been raining, but the sidewalks are still wet. So that would be a false statement, because it is sometimes false. Number three, um, the dog will bark if a stranger walks by the house. Now, although I think this is usually true, that when a stranger walks by a house, the dog will bark, I'm sure there are cases when the dog is sleeping or something else happens that um, a stranger walks by the house and the dog does not bark. So I'm going to consider this false um, because it's sometimes false. All right. Write each sentence as a conditional. Number one, an object weighs one ton if it weighs 2,000 pounds. Now, this statement seems like it applies um, when um, it weighs 2,000 pounds. So I'll write as, it as a conditional if, um, let's see here, what are we talking about? We're talking about an object. So if an object weighs 2,000 pounds, then it weighs one ton. And this is a true statement. Uh, number two, a catfish is a fish that has no scales. Um, well, this seems like it applies when, um, well, see, there's no if in the statement. And so we'll have to think about when this statement applies. And it seems like it applies when a fish is a catfish. So I'll write, if a fish is a catfish, then, let's see what happens in that case, um, it has no scales. All right. Um, sometimes you'll see conditional statements that are written using a Venn diagram or displayed using a Venn diagram. Um, and Venn diagrams are these diagrams that have circles in them. They overlap in parts. Um, and they're really useful in displaying um, things that are, you know, conditional statements or things that are, are logic and logic based. Okay. Um, this inside circle or this orange circle is the hypothesis in our conditional statement. And the outside circle, the blue circle, um, in, in conditional statements are the conclusion. And the reason for that is that if something is inside the orange circle, it's also inside the blue circle. So think about the, uh, the orange being like inside or a part of the bigger outside blue circle. Okay? So if something is in P, it is also in Q. Here's one example of that. Um, again, the hypothesis on the, is on the inside. Um, and the conclusion is on the outside. So if um, a language, since we're talking about languages, if a language is Italian, then it is a romance language. Okay? Meaning, if it's inside this circle, if it's Italian, then it must also be inside the romance language circle. All right, the negation. So, if you take a statement or a part of a statement and you make it negative or you... Um, yeah, if you make it negative, you're finding the negation of the statement. Okay, for example, um, angle A is acute. The negation of that is A is not acute. Now, let me also point out that if you take this statement, angle A is not acute, and you negated that, 
um, it would then become angle A is acute because uh, it becomes like a double negative, which is the same as, as the, the true statement. Okay, so um, if it's negative, you make it positive. If it's positive, you make it negative. Also, in the P and the Q notation, um, this tilde P means not P, which is useful to us um, in this statement. Other kinds of conditional statements. Um, like I said before, conditional statements can be written in this P arrow Q notation, um, where the P represents the hypothesis of the original conditional statement, and Q represents the conclusion in the um, original conditional statement. So this part is um, the hypothesis, and this part is the conclusion. Now the converse of that statement is where you take the hypothesis and the conclusion and you switch them. Okay, so the statement would be, if a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a square. So we've switched the P and the Q, and that gives us the converse. The inverse is where you leave them in the same order, but you negate both parts. Okay, if a figure is not a square, then it is not a quadrilateral. That's the inverse. Um, and the contrapositive is where you switch them and negate them. So we switch them and negate them. So um, if a figure is not a quadrilateral, then it is not a square. Now these are all variations of this original conditional statement. So I'm taking this one and you know negating parts of it or switching the order of that original conditional statement. Okay, let's practice this uh, by looking at this statement. If you eat breakfast, then you won't be hungry at school. Okay, so this if part is P, it's the hypothesis, and this part is the conclusion, it's Q. So the converse is where I switch those. So it begins if, uh, now it's the Q. You aren't hungry at school, then um, you ate breakfast. Okay, um, I've just switched the orders. Now feel free um, to kind of change verb tenses um, so that things agree. Otherwise, you might get some kind of some funny um, statements. Um, the inverse is where you leave them in the same order, but you negate both parts. If you don't eat breakfast. then you won't be hungry. I'm sorry, then you will be hungry. At school. Okay, so um, notice that the, the part you won't be hungry at school, when I negate that, it becomes a positive. You will be hungry at school. The contrapositive is where I switch the order and make them both negative. So it begins, if um, you are hungry at school, then you didn't eat breakfast. Okay, now let's look at the, the, the truth value of each of these statements. Um, we usually consider the original conditional to be true um, if it makes sense that it would be true. So we're to kind of assume that if you don't eat breakfast, then you will be hungry at school. Okay, um, the converse is um, if you aren't hungry at school, 
then you ate breakfast. Um, and that applies when you aren't hungry at school. That means that you must have eaten breakfast. Well, that may not always be true. You could, you know, eat um, a snack between classes. Your first period could be a potluck. I'm sure there are times that you're not hungry at school, but you didn't eat breakfast. So this would be considered false. Um, the inverse, if you don't eat breakfast, then you will be hungry at school, um, is again not always true in the exact same cases. So if you eat a snack between classes or your first period is a potluck, um, you still, you don't eat breakfast, but you're not hungry at school. That's false. Um, the contrapositive, if you are hungry at school, then you didn't eat breakfast. Well, it applies when you are hungry at school. Okay, so we can't use the cases where you eat a snack at school or you, um, get a potluck because you are hungry at school. It must have been true that you didn't eat breakfast. So this is also, this is true. Okay. Um, so let's talk lastly about equivalent statements. When two statements are true and false at the same time, or when they have the same truth value, they're considered equivalent statements. So back here, um, the conditional... and the contrapositive were both true. So they're equivalent statements. The converse and the inverse are also are false. They have the same truth value, and so they're also equivalent statements. Okay? And this will usually happen, that the conditional and the contrapositive have the same truth value, and the converse and the inverse have the same truth value. Okay? So um, those are equivalent statements. And this down here says a conditional statement is equivalent to um, its contrapositive, and the inverse and the converse of any conditional are equivalent. Okay, um, this video was on conditional statements. You should now know what a conditional statement is, be able to define a conditional statement. Hopefully now you can write a conditional statement. You can determine if it's true or false, and you can also give the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Now, again, kind of write converse is where you switch the order. The inverse is when you negate both parts. And the contrapositive is where you switch them and make them both negative um, of a conditional statement.